All right, so I'm Irish. I'm Irish American. And this recipe that we're going to be doing today, the famous corned beef hash. Does it look expensive? Then don't touch it. That's what my parents would always say. It's holiday season. I'm wearing flannel, insulated flannel at that. And this is essentially the Hawaiian shirt to the redneck. And uh, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, corned beef hash has a lot of history, a lot of rich history with American Irish. And it started up in New England, Northeast area. Now this is not a Tim fact. It's not a great piece of meat. That's why you have to slow cook it for so long. And I think most people would be like, boiled meat sounds like a rough combo. But um, done right, this is a delicious and easy recipe. Because it's hunting season, I need to get a little bit of practice with uh, some tools that I use while I'm hunting. This is a pretty handy thing, being able to like remove the blades when you've been doing some work, maybe taking something off, something that you hunted. Am I gonna cut this right here? Yeah, I'm doing what I'm gonna do. Because you brought it up, I'm gonna do it right now. Do you wanna do it? Uh, yes. Okay. Nice, nice. Perfect. All right, let's hope we have another onion. Thanks. All right. <laughs> so here's our order. We're gonna slow cook our corned beef, and then um, we're gonna start prepping our veggies, and then we're gonna take the corned beef out, we're gonna mince that up, and then I'm gonna put the onions in, we're gonna saute the onions, then I'm gonna put the hash in, then I'm gonna start browning the hash, then I'm going to add the corned beef to it, and then when all of that's cooked, I'm gonna put a huge layer of eggs right on the top. So, with that, let's go get our corned beef in and start that slow cook. All right, so the slow cook process. The corned beef is essentially brisket. You got your fat side and uh, you got your lean side. So, most corned beefs come with a pre-packaged corning spice packet. And all you do is you add that into the water. You could put about 14 ounces of water just so there's a little bit of the meat open at the top. And this is what you do. You take your meat, you clean it from the package so you have a nice, clean bunch of meat. I like to take the fat and put the fat up because I'm gonna take that meat, when I pull it out at the end, I'm gonna carve off the fat. So that's gonna be the part of the meat that I like the least. Then you take your corning and you cover it right on top. So we're gonna come back to this thing in about eight to 10 hours. Slow cook is happening. We're just gonna let it slowly marinate and cook. Corned beef is done. We're gonna pull the corned beef, we're gonna chop it up, and then um, I'm going to start browning our onions. Okay, here we go, corned beef, slow cooked. Take a little peek here. Oh man, look how tender that is. Whoa! Maybe it's too tender. This might be a problem. Maybe it's too fork time. Okay. We're gonna carve off some of the fat. So the fat cap right on the back, we just shave that off. We don't need that. And take as much of this fat off as we can without getting into the good meat. Uh, I want some of that meat right there though. All good meat we're gonna put in this bowl. Anything on here that we don't want? Man, that's a lot of good meat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look, just look how turn that is. I don't even need to cut it. Mince it up. <laughs> this is very stressful because I know what having a deadline feels like. And we're gonna saute our 
onions, a little bit of garlic. Uh, there's no science to this. Man, these blades are sharp. Yeah, see, now things are popping. I remember having um, core beef and cabbage and, and my, my grandpa being like, just put mustard on it. Just put extra mustard on it. It'll taste better. If you just put more mustard on it. Like, I don't want, I don't like mustard. I don't like cabbage. I don't like boiled carrots. I don't want boiled meat. So how does mustard make it taste any better? But more mustard and then it just tastes better. Even if you are torturing your, your grandkids, as long as you make them this, and make sure there's plenty of, that was the worst. When there's too many potatoes and too many onions and there wasn't enough corn, corn beef in it, that's not okay. Nobody wants that. Nope. So onions are getting kind of translucent. Uh, I, I could normally go real highbrow on this, but because I have the family waiting on dinner, I'm using pre-minced garlic. You could take garlic cloves. I like to smash them and throw them in there, but ain't nobody got time for that tonight. Okay, so I don't need the onions to be fully 100% brown because they're gonna go back in the pot. Now, most hash you're gonna do with a vegetable oil. Um, I just try to be a little bit healthy. So you could split it with olive oil. Um, you could also just do it with olive oil. You just have to watch your temperature. Make sure that you don't burn the um, potatoes. All right, oil's in the pan. Kukri. Man, that's fun. That's a, I don't know if that will ever get old. Man, this is just a violent looking knife. There's a famous moment where one of the uh, Gurkhas daughters and one of the wives had been kidnapped by this European terrorist slash thief. And all of their ammunition had been spent and all he had left was that one kukri. And he had taped it right behind his neck. And he walked up with his hands raised like this. And that European terrorist, Alan Rickman, was standing behind his wife, like using her as a body shield, as a hostage. And he reached behind his head and he grabbed that kukri and bang! Low percentage knife throw of a kukri right in the center of the forehead. Alan Rickman slowly fell out the window and uh, that Gurkha went and saved his wife. I mean, there's a little bit of struggle involving a Rolex watch that, that fell off. I always wonder what happened to that watch, but that's a story for another day during the potato famine. They couldn't make corn beef hash because the hash with the potatoes. They didn't have the beef and they also didn't have the hash. Potato famine. So it was, that was a dark, you, you wanna talk about a dark age for a people that lived off both corn beef and hash. But one Irish lad with a kukri was able to turn the tides. He slowly started plowing the fields with that knife and the sweat that came from his brow added nourishment back to the barren soil of Ireland, the promised land, my homeland. No, America's my homeland, but um, yeah. So he saved the whole entire country, peoples with the kukri. They taught us this in special forces, tactical patience. Turned it too soon. It's been a tragic fall. We lost one of our chickens to possibly a raccoon, maybe a coyote, also maybe a fox. Whatever this predator was, it messed with the wrong chicken coop. Because I brought down hellfire and fury, I'm talking scorched earth, to every predator within a mile. The score, yes, they, they knocked one out of the park to start the game off. But since then, 
I have just been racking up scores. I've relocated possums. I like possums. Possums are cool. They, they make weird sounds. They, they play possum, which is very French-like. Uh, it's a coward approach to warfare, in my opinion, but that's fine. Um, anyways, so I've been slaying these things. You don't get near my chickens and see what happens. Speaking of chickens, this is gonna go on top of our hash. These are all eggs from my domicile. This is, this, this is a really important part. Um, all the other stuff that we've cooked already, you need to separate. No, you don't. You just take the whole pot and go like this. Make sure you get everything in there because I want everything in there. One quick stir. It's like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but with just two things and you eat them, which is different. <laughs> so now we're gonna add our eggs. All right. Okay, salt. You can just shake it in like this. You get it, get it, get it, get it. Say bad salt. bad salt. Bad salt, more. It's a super naughty salt. There you go. It's not gonna get any presents? <laughs> no, it is not. It's gonna get no presents. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, stand by, 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 stand by. That's a big one. That chicken had a rough morning. Yeah. Okay, so now put your thumbs like this and pull it apart with your thumbs. Perfect! Knuckles! What do I do to scare you? I sneak up like this. Just like that. Where's our chicken eggs? Mm -hmm. Will you go tell our chickens to get back to work? To make that many? Yeah. Right now? Yeah, go tell them to start, start laying out some eggs. So, what we're trying to get to is a one minute egg where it's mostly cooked through, but there's still a little bit of runniness in there uh, because things cook at different temperatures in the crock pot. It's a good crock pot, but they're also imperfect because wherever the heating element is, it's gonna be hotter right over that. Um, and usually the edges cook faster than the middle. So here we go. Let's check it out. Kill our temperature. So our top is gonna be kind of, oh, that one's good. That one's good. And I think we're good. All right. Cut it, cut right into here. Nice, little crispy on the bottom. The egg looks perfect. There. Oh, Ooh. I just chipped that. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know how these plates survived me. Is this what they do? This is like the trick thing, right? Like they put it on and then they like wipe it off. All right, so there is our Corn beef hash and eggs. Perfect, perfect brown bottom. Our our one minute cooked egg. Mmm. Let's get a little taste. I got on my first bite some potato, some onion, some egg, and that corned beef. It's like molten lava. I know it, but I want to eat it so bad, but then I'm gonna burn my mouth. Nope, too soon. Okay, no, 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 tackle patience. <laughs> Flashbacks to childhood. And it's all worth it. Okay, it's delicious, it's dinner time. Family is actually right behind the camera, ready to eat. So stay safe, stay free, and stay fed. Enjoy the holiday season.